What's up guys, Jay here and welcome to another Deep Rock Galactic video. Today I got a spicy one for you guys to sink your teeth into. So season 4 for Deep Rock Galactic has been out now for almost a week on console and two weeks on PC, and I don't know about you guys, but I have been playing a lot of it. So I thought that it would be a good idea to talk about season 4 as a whole and what my thoughts are on how the new content was executed, and if there is anything in particular that stuck out to me either positively or negatively. I know that this season was highly anticipated from the community, myself included, so now it's time to see if it lives up to the hype. So if you guys are ready, let's strap on our jet boots, grab those foam shooters, and knock back a randomized and go through all the meat of Deep Rock Galactic Season 4, Critical Corruption. By the way, if you like this video, please be sure to subscribe because less than 10% of you watching right now are, and if you don't, you're going to make Steve sad. And you don't want Steve to get sad, do you? Your workforce is about to get bigger. Dwarf inbound. So we're going to go through all of the things added into Season 4 piece by piece, starting at home with the changes added to the space rig and quality of life improvements as well. In terms of simple but useful changes that were very welcome, we got a few new features. First, in the armor customization, we got the option to use sleeveless versions of our armor. While not game changing or warping, it is still a nice way to give us some more customization options. Note that it doesn't work with all types of armor. In fact, it seems to only work with armor that you earn in game and not the DLC purchased armor, or at least not the ones that I have. Still, it's a nice way to give your dwarf some more flair and to show off their muscles. I've been working out. Anyway, moving on to the equipment side of things, we get a couple of useful changes. First, we now have the option to fully randomize our loadouts to make for some interesting build crafting experiences. This is a nice quality of life change that gives you a chance to maybe find some loadouts that you otherwise wouldn't think to put together. However, I don't see this feature being something that many newer players will use a whole lot since they are probably still trying to unlock much of their equipment. I see this more as a playground tool for the veteran players who have multiple loadouts already but want to try to mix things up in a new way. Along the same lines, we now have the option to copy and paste loadouts for more ease of use when trying to make something new. This is really useful if you are trying to do some experimenting with a loadout you have already done, but you don't want to try to remember exactly how it's laid out. This is another thing that I think will be greatly appreciated by the veteran community as it allows for more build crafting options for those who already have many things unlocked. Moving over to the leisure side of things, we also get a few new things added to the Abyss Bar area. First being a brand new beer option, the Randomizer. Once you unlock this beer, drinking it will completely randomize both your equipment loadout and your appearance, leading to some interesting combinations. To explain how it works in a little bit more detail, once you drink the beer, your appearance will immediately change. However, your loadout will not change until you begin the mission, so there's no way to tell exactly what loadout you will get until you get there. When you open the pause menu, you can see your character holding its primary weapon, so you can get at least an idea of what your primary weapon will be, but everything else you won't know until you get into the mission. Interestingly, if you go to the wardrobe or equipment terminals, you will see the current loadouts that you actually have equipped. Also, once the mission is over, your appearance and loadout will go back to what you originally had before drinking the beer, so don't worry about losing your setups. Now what exactly does the beer randomize? Well, your passive perks, active perks, throwable equipment, as well as your weapons, their upgrades, overclocks, frameworks, paint jobs, and the upgrades for the rest of your equipment. So in summary, everything is randomized. Now personally speaking, I think this is my favorite thing added to the game this season. I have used this beer for almost every mission that I have gone into. I really like the idea of not knowing what equipment I am going to get and what kinds of upgrades it will have. It's a fun challenge, especially since I get really indecisive a lot of the time and don't know what I want to use on certain missions. Plus, seeing the kind of random appearances that it gives my character is just hilarious to see. This gives a nice challenge to people who have all or most of the equipment and overclocks unlocked and can also help you find a new loadout that you might not otherwise have thought to put together. Overall, I love this addition and like I said, it's probably my new favorite feature. Lastly on the space rig, we got the famous arcade machine, Jetty Boot. This is a playable arcade cabinet that you can play at your leisure in the new spot behind the Abyss Bar. The game itself is literally just a Flappy Bird clone in Deep Rock Galactic. It's honestly a lot of fun to play even though I am personally not good because when Flappy Bird was available, I wasn't very good at that either. The in-game reason why this is here is actually to be able to train us on how to access one of the new pieces of gear that we can acquire during missions, the jet boot crates, which I'll talk about shortly. By the way, there is actually a jet boot crate in the space rig for you to try out located at the very top of the space rig, near where you can jump into the drop pod's engines. The mission is ready, the pod is prepped, get on board the drop pod. 
Now that we have gone over all of what was added to the space rig and quality of life improvements, it's time to get into the new things that you will encounter when doing actual missions. The first and most common thing you will most likely encounter are the two new bug types, the Stingtail and the Septic Spreader. These new enemies add a nice change to the enemy dynamic, and since they are base enemies, you will experience them most out of all the new enemies. The Stingtail has an interesting position as a disruptive enemy that displaces teammates by pulling them out of position. They grab you with their tails and yank you towards them where they can proceed to headbutt you with the massive horns on their face. Important to note that the heightened senses perk does not work on the Stingtail's grab move because it's not immobilizing the player completely, rather it's quickly pulling the player towards it and then releasing, so you most likely wouldn't even have time to activate the perk if it did work. The Septic Spreader on the other hand is a ranged combatant that spits out globs of stuff that can make the area you're standing in dangerous if you linger for too long. It kind of feels like a ground version of the Mactera Goo Bomber, although a lot more deadly. Think of the Glyphid Spitter as a sniper rifle and the Septic Spreader as a grenade launcher, much slower but a much larger area of effect. Overall, I like the place that both of these enemies have in the Glyphid family. They change up the combat just enough to make it feel fresh and diverse compared to before. One thing I will say, and I may be in the minority here, but I kind of wish that they would spawn more often and in greater numbers. I see the Septic Spreaders fairly often, but it's usually one at a time, and they go down fairly easily. The Stingtails, on the other hand, I only see once in a while, and usually only one will show up every now and then. I'm sure the devs did this on purpose so that it would not be too oppressive to the players, but I feel like they could up the spawn rate for them just a little bit. After all, they are very fun to fight and I want the chance to fight them even more. Moving on from there, we have a whole new batch of Rockpox enemy variants that were added as well since Rockpox is still a huge theme of this season. Specifically, we got Rockpox infected Bactera Bombers, Glyphid Spitters, Glyphid Exploders, and Natocyte Breeders. For the most part, fighting these creatures doesn't feel that much different from their clean counterparts other than that their attacks cause Rockpox buildup now. The only exception to this I feel is the Natocyte Breeder, which now kind of feels like a mini Lithophage boss. I thought that the normal breeders spitting out electric jellyfish was bad enough, but the fact that these guys spit out Rockpox larva is actually even worse. Overall, I like the addition of the Rockpox roster of enemies as they don't warp the fighting in too extreme of a way and still give us some new encounters while we are doing Lithophage missions. Now it's time to talk about the big additions, starting with the very terrifying and very intimidating new seasonal event, the Lithophage Corruptor. Simply put, this thing is... Scary. The Corruptor can happen during any mission similar to machine events or other random encounters. You can hear the Corruptor with ominous sounds as you get closer, and you will start to see Rockpox infection scattered in small pieces. The Corruptor leaves behind Rockpox infection wherever it goes, which also plays into its attack moves. It's actually not hostile at first until you attempt to attack it. You can't harm it with normal weapons. In order to take it out, you need to call in a cleansing pod by interacting with the Corruptor itself, similar to the Lithophage Spikes. You need to cover the Corruptor's armored shells with little foam and then use the vacuum to cleanse the foam along with the armor. Once you take out both pieces of armor off of one section, that section will be available to damage. The Corruptor has various different attacks, including a move where spikes travel along an infected ground towards you. Because of this, you also want to make sure that you use the cleansing equipment to clean the infection the Corruptor leaves behind to limit its attack power. Once you do finally defeat the Corruptor, it drops play cards for you to deposit for that extra seasonal goodness. There are a few things I want to say about the Corruptor fight. First, I think that it's insanely fun to fight this thing as it has a lot of moving parts and requires a good amount of cooperation between the team. On the other hand, doing these fights by yourself can be very challenging since you have to do every part by yourself. Unless you have Bosco with you, then I guess that makes it a little bit easier. That being said, one critique I do have, and this may be just because I have bad luck, but I feel that they could increase the chances of getting this event to happen. So far, since Season 4 has launched for me, I have to have done at least 60 to 70 missions, and as of now, I have had this event happen twice out of those missions. Like I said, I could just have really bad luck, but I kind of wish that they would have given this event an increased chance of happening for the first few weeks of the season to help give us a better chance of experiencing it. The last thing that was added is the addition of the Jet Boot crates. These crates can randomly appear similar to other events like the Corruptor. If you find one, you need to activate the crate by playing the Flappy Bird clone game I mentioned earlier. Once you complete it, you gain access to jet boots that can help you get around much easier. 
These things are very hard to find. At the time of making this video, I was only able to find them once, and that was during a stream, so trying to get footage for this up until a few days ago has been very difficult. That being said, I do believe they are this hard to find for a reason. These things give you so much mobility that they pretty much completely negate the need for traversal tools, so with that in mind, it makes sense that the devs don't want these things to show up all the time so that players can still effectively use their equipment. That being said, similar to the Corruptor, I do think it would have been nice to give us an extra increased chance to find these for the first few weeks. I really do wish I could say more about how these function, but I really just haven't had enough experience with them to give my opinion on them. Now that I have gone over all the things that have been added into the game for Season 4, it's time to give the verdict on if Season 4 is good. And my answer is... Yes! Mostly. Let me be a little bit more specific. I really do enjoy and love all of the content that they have added into the game. The Corruptor is fun to fight, the new enemies help change up the combat encounters in a new way, the Randomizer is the greatest drink ever added into the game, and the Jet Boots give you an insane advantage in terms of mobility. That being said, I feel like the overall quantity of the new content was nailed perfectly. However, the frequency of said content has been a little underwhelming. Now there is of course the possibility that I have just super terrible luck and have not been getting a lot of the new stuff, and I'm sure someone has been lucky enough to get the Corruptor on every mission since launch. However, overall, I think my main and really only critique is that the new content doesn't happen as much as I would like. When I see the new Stingtail or Septic Spreader enemy, there is usually only one or two every once in a while, where I would like to see them in a little bit more frequency. Now I'm sure the devs have their reasons for making the spawn rates what they are, and I trust that they know what they're doing, I'm just voicing my opinion, which is from the point of the consumer. I do think it would have been nice to have an increased spawn chance for all this new content for at least the first few weeks. So in summary, Season 4 is an awesome addition to Deep Rock Galactic and gave us a lot of new things to play with, both on our side and the side of the bugs. While we didn't get any new weapons or gadgets, unless you count the jet boots, you don't necessarily need them in order to make a really good season. It still gave us a lot of new things to experiment with, and don't forget, this is one of the extremely few games out there that these huge seasonal updates come completely free to the player, so don't take that for granted. So what do you guys think about the Season 4? Did you like what they added? Do you wish they added more? Do you wish they added less? Let me know down in the comments. Anyway, I hope you guys found this video helpful. Please be sure to give it a like because it tells me which types of videos you guys want to see. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time for another video.